Anthony Hartwig with another spring sports season preview. We are meeting back up with Michael Thorpe, the head coach of the Salem Quakers. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Well, thank you for having us. We appreciate all you guys do. You got it. And this Salem team gearing up for another season. We're all excited for it. Why don't you start off with a little recap of last year and some of the lessons that you think you can bring from last year into this year with your returning players? Uh, we got a lot of experience. We had a lot, uh, four freshmen playing for us and a pretty young team last season. Uh, so uh, we were in a lot of close games last year, so we're looking to turn that corner this year. We're excited to see uh, how we do in those real close games to, to really flip that uh, record over this year. Usually when a team is in a lot of close games, there's that one thing that you can do differently or one thing you can improve on to flip those results, what do you think that is for the solemn, for the softball team? What is that one thing that needs to flip for those close games to turn your way? I think every sub-500 team probably says it, but it's just that one inning and just keeping that composure in that inning and maybe limiting it uh, from four or five runs down to one or two. Uh, and, you know, that flips the score at the end of the game. You know, if you took out one inning for most teams, the record on the season, you know, at least sub-500 teams – you know, it makes a, a world of a difference. So keeping that composure, one more year of experience at some positions is going to it's gonna pay off in those games this year. Let's talk about your roster this year and the, the players that you're going to have a part of your squad and the names that we should all be on the lookout for. Well, it starts with our captain, Channing Toy, the catcher. She's a year-round player, um, you know, dedicated captain of the team this season. Uh, she's poised. She'll be batting leadoff for us. She's a junior. And then in the circle, we have uh, Morgan Blaine, a sophomore returning, and Emily Lewis, a sophomore returning. And both of them last year uh, took about 50% of the workload as freshmen. They're also travel ball players that play year-round, work with their pitching coaches. Um, and we're excited because both of those two have just uh, leaps and bounds above last year, not only physically and things like that uh, with their game, but I know mentally, you know, just being a freshman put to a – you know, I think last season we didn't play one freshman pitcher all season, and it ended up being like uh, maybe 20 senior pitchers that we faced during the season. So that that uh, that gap there with experience is now uh, extremely shortened. So we're really excited about where we're at in the circle. Uh, first base, we'll have Hadley Carlisle, a sophomore back. Uh, good stick there. You know, nice, nice first baseman. Second base, Paige Mino is going to kind of take over that, another sophomore. And then it uh, looks like we're going to have a freshman at shortstop, Michaela Snelzer, and also Emily Lewis when she's not pitching. Another sophomore there. Bella Brand will be back at third, a senior. It's been a four-year starter for us. Lauren Barton in center field, an explosive athlete uh, on the on the bases and all around in her game, going to get those balls that maybe some other uh, center fielders can't get to. Uh, she'll be back and be the captain of that outfield. And then on the corners, uh, we're working on figuring those things out and got a lot of young players vying for those positions and some of it will come down to who's got that hot stick right there. I mean, you have that, that, uh, that the problem that I think a lot of coaches want is a lot of players with only a couple of positions to give out. Um, what are some th things that you want to see in the next, you know, couple of weeks when you're, when you're deciding those decisions and deciding who's going to be, you know, in those spots, what, what's going in your mind what, on the deciding factors of those? Well, some of it is uh, who's pitching in the pitching sequence, where they fall in when they're not pitching. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, it's the stick. I really think we'll have a platoon because some of them will have that good back going. Others are a little more aggressive in the field or on the bases. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably platoon those more. Um, we might have four starters at different times in right and left based on uh, our competition and who's pitching and what they bring to the table. And also riding the hot hand when they're hot. Definitely a good problem to have for a softball coach. Um, let's talk about your schedule. We'll start inside the league. The EBC, always a tough one. West Branch, Marlington always bring a great program, and as well as Minerva and all the other teams in the EBC that are not a part of the YSN family yet, but we'd love to have them on board. Coach, what about the EBC looks good to you this year, and what do you expect out of the league? Well, every year there's not one game that you can either take for granted um, – Every team battles back. Uh, if you think they're going to have a down season, they just don't. They rebound. Um, you know, Marlington, as usual, will have one through nine, you know, travel helmets on, ready to roll and hitting the snot out of the ball. And then uh, West Branch, of course, that's always our rival. They got a great team back. I know Alliance is rebooting a little bit, but they will. 
And uh, Carrollton and Minerva will always be competitive as well. They always seem to bring something to the table. And uh, they work hard in the offseason, and it shows our, our league's very, very competitive, as you know. It's a smaller league, which means you have a little bit more chances to get in the non-conference and test yourselves outside of it. What are some teams that pop up outside of the EBC that you're really excited to, to get with? Well, it looks like we uh, hopefully we'll be playing Columbiana now on Monday. That wasn't on the schedule, but I know there was a, a loss in their schedule too, so we may be playing them. That We're excited to do that because they're a, a solid program. we got Hubbard on the schedule, Howland, uh, teams like that that are perennial, um, really, really good teams. And of course, down in Tennessee, we'll be you know that schedule. Uh, you know, you're you're battling state runner-ups left and right, so or state champions. So we're excited about that too. Yeah, let's talk about that Tennessee trip. You're taking it again, and we always get the best stories out of your Tennessee trip. Uh, what does it mean to you to be able to make that trip again with this team and to be able to head back down to Tennessee? It means the world, and that's how we'll start our season. So that'll go a long way in setting the tone for the season. Uh, we may only have one game in if we uh, we get rained out this Saturday uh, before we head down there. So that sets the tone, the mood, and, you know, that positivity we, we're we going to feel down there. We're going to try to ride all through the season. Uh, that trip, uh, absolutely. I mean, the kids look forward to it. They'll talk about it the, the minute the season's over. What are some of your favorite stories from last year? We didn't really get to catch up with you after the trip last year. So you got anything that you can you can share with us from last year's trip to Tennessee? Yeah, we don't have that exciting bear story this time. Dang it. <laughs> I was called. Uh, I was called out to the parking lot uh, because they said, "Hey, Matt got hurt again," and I'm like, "Oh, come on! That girl's getting hurt, you know, over her shadow." Sometimes it just seemed like that's how she did it, you know. So they called me out to the parking lot, and every girl has a ton of water balloons on them, of course, and it not only extended from the parking lot but into the coach's cabin a little bit, and they lit us up. But we got our deposits back from the cabins <laughs> and everything. Uh, a lot of towels came in the process, but it was it was definitely uh, they get me seems like every year with something. They got you, coach. Yeah, but no mauling this year, no bear mauling. No bear. Happened. That's good. That's good. We don't want. Yeah. We'd much rather you get pelted with water balloons and mauled by a bear. Just yeah, you know. I can come back in a week from that, but a yeah. bear, I might be out. Yeah, that that would ruin your whole month. Um, <laughs> yeah. Coach, when you talk about some of the things that, that you see out of the youth of this program and, and the sophomores and freshmen, the underclassmen that have been so strong for you, what makes you proud as a coach that they're stepping up in, in you know, as, as a young group of players? Well, their maturity is above their years, um, and they want to win. They're hungry to win, and they're not just hungry for their own game. I mean, they're picking each other up. But I, I hate to talk about the upperclassmen uh, when you're talking about the freshmen, but – they're part of the reason they've led the way and they've showed these girls what it takes. And that's going to really resonate. Um, starts again with Channing toy. I mean, she shows these girls each and every day and they get a little bit out of line or a little ahead of herself. I mean, in, in the proper way, she makes sure they're back in line. You also don't, you don't get a freshman that's trying to go without a great, you know, uh, building blocks in the, in the youth level. What do you guys do to, to make that so strong and to, to have the girls ready to go when they come in as a freshman? Um, we do a lot in my building. I work with the kids. Um, there's a lot of kids that come to me with the lessons and things uh, in Columbiana there at the building. I, I work with them. And that's paid off in a huge way. And then just, I mean, I can't tip my hat enough to the volunteers that, you know, ask me questions and things with the rec league. And uh, we're tying that together. And then as well, I mean, this is the most kids that have ever traveled at Salem, so you know, some of them are playing rec and some are playing travel or both. But just getting them around the travel game from being in the building with me, uh, they've ran it with it in their own direction. You know, we've got kids, you know, Thunder Elite, different programs, athletics, um, all over. So they're not just tied into the couple travel teams that are in my building. But it's nice to see them get out there, get around that game on a year basis. And it's going to really pay off down the line. For people that don't know, I mean, you would be, be, don't take too much time off of the sport of softball because you're also a travel coach as well. What do you love so much about the sport? What keeps you coming back to this coaching position? The people. I absolutely love the kids. I mean, there's some kids that I work with, um, you know, had trouble catching a ball. Then I see them make a team. And then from there, I see them start to excel. You know, those underachievers. I mean, I, I appreciate all the athletes, but when I see those underachievers um, or overachievers, I should say, you know, just get it done. I mean, that's that's pretty rewarding. 
All right, Coach, it's time to talk about your staff and put them on a pedestal as well. We know that you don't do this alone at all, so I want to give you the time to shout out your staff and who you have working with you. Well, we got Eric Markovich back, who's uh, my right-hand man, if you will, at varsity. And then Alyssa Tome will be with us this year. Uh, she's an alumni from Columbiana there. Uh, I used to coach her when she was a lot younger. And um, Kyle Gaynor's back as the JV head coach. Madison Markovich is his assistant. And um, we just have a very tight-knit group. I mean, we talk about everything from softball to outside softball. Um, life, families are fairly close now. Um, and that goes a long way because the girls see that chemistry on the field. Lori Brooks, our scorekeeper, I know she's not there at a lot of practices, but she's a, she's like a mother in that dugout that has a big influence on the girls emotionally. And, you know, I can't, you know, of course, uh, I mean, we just work well together. <laughs> For the Salem community, uh, counting them up so they get a chance to come see you guys, do you have a home game scheduled before you go to Tennessee? We're supposed to play tomorrow with Hubbard at home. Okay. And then Columbiana might be on Monday. We still got to get that verified. But I don't know if that's going to be home or away, I guess. I got to wait till uh, we hear back. But I guess well, the weather's supposed to be nice Monday. So looking. If they don't get a chance to see you before Tennessee, you know, you're you're welcome to go down and make the trip and, and see the Quakers. But if not, we're definitely a must-see team. When they come back from Tennessee, they'll be sharpened from that experience. Coach, we thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate your time, and we look forward to talking again real soon. Hey, thank you very much. You have a good one.